Hello, everybody, and welcome to the New Flame Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew, along with Rocky. You may see him pop in a little bit. You know, he's just laying down right next to me. But today, I'm going to be giving you my 2022 MLB All-Star vote. And keep in mind, all these stats are um, as of entering Saturday, June 18th. Um, as you can see here, the first phase of All-Star uh, voting ends June 30th. So I might do another one in about another week, maybe June 29th. Um, just all depends. And then the finals, you vote from the, for the Stodu starting July 5th through the 8th. And the All-Star game is on July 19th, I believe. So, pretty simply, you select one player from each league and for each position except for the outfield. You choose three, obviously. So let's get it started now with the first baseman of the AL here. It's one guy. It's one guy. Like, come on out. It's Ty France of the Seattle Manners. This man has just been elite all year. Um, now, I, I mean, obviously, guys like Vlad are going to get votes uh, just because, you know, it's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Uh, but really, I mean, just Ty France has just been better this season. He's one of the most improved players over the past couple of years. Ty France has been really good this year for the Mariners and a key piece on why they are keeping pace um, in the AL West or in the American League wildcard race as they got off to a slow start, but Ty France has been elite all year. Now, moving on to the NL now, one guy I would really love to get some votes is CJ Crone. This man has been a beast this year. Um... He's just been so good for the uh, for the Rockies out there in Coors Field. But come on now. It's Paul Goldschmidt, uh, arguably NL MVP favorite right now. Um, look, at, look at the numbers here. Just 344 average, 16 homers, 56 RBIs. Just, he has been simply one of the best players in the league this year and definitely deserves to make the All-Star team. Next up now... Going on to the second baseman, this is one of the more weaker positions in the entire MLB. Obviously, I'd love for my boy Glaber to get in there, um, having a resurgent year after just two straight, just awful years from Glaber. Uh, moving back over, to, uh, moving to second base has really helped him um, just really come back, not come back completely to his rookie in 2019 form, but you know, definitely he has been is Im improving. Uh, other guys, I mean, Whit Merrifield, I mean, it's Whit Merrifield, like, he's great. Um, we all know how good he's been. Um, Espinal from the Blue Jays, Santiago Espinal has been fantastic for them, not only defensively, um, but he's starting to figure out at the offensive side of the game. Uh, hitting 283 with 764 OPS, I mean, he's been good this year. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I mean, obviously, guys like El Tuve are going to get votes, but this one guy, you know, I passed him a couple of times, Andres Jimenez. Man, he's been really good for the Guardians, um, and, you know, while the power isn't quite there, you see, but he hits for a high average, he plays great defense, and coming over in the Lindor trade, I mean, with how, you know, kind of iffy Lindor's been with the Mets, I mean, I mean, this trade is, I mean... Everyone was like, oh my goodness, the then Indians got fleeced or whatever. But Andres Jimenez has really blossomed into a really good player in uh, in the league. And now moving on to the NL. Fortunately, I mean, I probably would have voted for Ozzy Albies. You know, having a little bit of a down year yet again. Like I said, second baseman isn't that great of a position. Um, I would have voted for him. However, he did just have that season-ending injury the other day. So unfortunate. Man, it seems kind of like Acuna last year. I mean, it wasn't... I mean, Acuna was actually right before the All-Star break. So not really. Uh, never mind. Scratch that. Um, but, I mean, I said it's a weak position. Guys like Ketel Marte, who have been good for a while, are going to get votes. If Jonathan India could stay healthy, I'm sure he would be getting some votes. Uh, Tyro Stroud has been really good for the Giants this year. Uh, and he, you know, he, I don't even know where this came from. He used to be on the Yankees, and whenever you'd actually play, I'd be like, why is he playing? But now he's pretty good for the Giants. Jazz Chisholm, he's been great. He's been one of the most electric players in the league. But then you come down to Mets, Jeff McNeil right here. 
I mean, just another one of those guys that can play, you know, kind of all over the place, second, third, outfield, whatever you need him to do, he can do. Um, hitting hitting 324 this season. Now, the power numbers and, you know, the run OBI numbers aren't quite jumping off the page, but like I say, he plays great defense, and he's going to be my vote for the NL second baseman. Now, moving on to third base now. In the AL, I mean, it, it's between... Sorry, it's be. I mean, it's really between Rafael Devers and Jose Ramirez. Um, and it's not even close between any other guys. Um, and I'm gonna go with De Ramirez. Just the fact that he's been able to just carry that Guardians team to what I think like third place in the AL Central, maybe even second place since Chicago's not even playing that well. Um, just. Jose Ramirez has just been able to just play out of his mind uh, this year. He's obviously, I think he's leading the league in OBIs, and that's always that's always been what he's doing. Over 1,000 OPS is insane. Um, good elite power as well from Jose Ramirez. Now the defense, I mean, the defense is pretty good, but it you know it's not like among the game's elite like Manny Machado, but also at the same time neither is Rafael Devers. So I mean. You know, but yeah, Jose Ramirez is my vote in the AL and in the NL. It's it's really one guy. Now I it's between two guys, but it's not even really super close. Um, now I would love for my guy Brandon Drury to get some votes from the Reds. He's been playing amazing this year. Just I don't even know where this came from. But and then you got your staples at third base. You got Nolan Arenado, Manny Machado, um, guys like that. Uh, Austin O'Reilly having a killer month of June, uh, by the way. He's just been amazing. He's been a key part <clears throat> as to why the Braves went on that 14-game winning streak. But going with Manny Machado here uh, at third base for the NL from the Padres. I mean, Manny Machado has been elite since he stepped foot on the diamond in the MLB with the Orioles. And I think just recently he was... Like one of the only few players in MLB history to have 1,500 hits before he turned 30. That's just crazy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Manny Machado just having a killer year without Fernando Tatis Jr. healthy. Just imagine uh, what kind of damage they'll be able to do once they're fully healthy. First place in the NL West last time I checked as well. That's crazy. I mean, after the Dodgers signed Freddie Freeman, spent all his money, they're not even in first place. That is hilarious. Moving on to shortstop now, um, even though Tim Anderson probably should be getting votes here, um, you know I don't like Tim Anderson, um, so I'm not voting for him, and I hate to bring like personal vendettas into this, but uh, I'm just not doing it. Uh, I'm not voting for Tim Anderson, as even though he probably should be the starter in the AL. Um, then, I mean, other than Tim Anderson, it's really between, like, two guys, maybe. I mean, Clay is going to get votes, but Xander Bogarts, J.P. Crawford even has been good for the Mariners this year as well. Jeremy Pena has been really good as a rookie for the Astros, as well as Corey Seager, the big acquisition for in the offseason by the Rangers. But I'm going to go with Xander Bogarts from the Red Sox. He, I mean, that all that Red Sox team does is hit... Um, with him, Devers, Martinez, uh, Kike Hernandez. Let's see who who else is on that. Trevor Story, uh, Christian Vasquez too. It just all they do is hit, and I mean Xander Bogarts has been just really good for a long time now, and I think I think he's kind of flown underneath the radar for the most part, but um, should definitely get more recognition. Moving on to the NL side of things. I mean, shortstop in the NL, I mean, it isn't that stacked of a position. I mean, obviously there's Tatis, but he hasn't played this year at all. Troy Turner has been really good. Dansby Swanson has been, uh, like Austin O'Reilly, been really good in terms of the Braves' 14-game winning streak that they went on. Uh, hitting amazing, you know, playing good defense. Um, but here... 
Tommy Edmond is another guy, actually, too, that, you know, he moved over from short, uh, to shortstop from, like, I think second base or third base, second base from the Cardinals, um, playing shortstop now with Nolan Gorman at second, Nolan Arenado at third base. I mean, you can make a case saying that the Cardinals have the best infield in the league with Goldschmidt, Gorman, Edmond, and Arenado. That's just filthy. And then you also have Brendan Donovan, who's playing really good as well. Um... So, I mean, it's really between Tommy Edmond and Trey Turner for me. I mean, Trey Turner is just one of those, you know, catchers. Not, I'm looking at the catchers next, but one of those guys that just, whenever he's on the field, he's always a threat to, you know, he's going to kill you with his average, and then he's going to kill you on the bases. Uh, just one of the most, one of the elite base dealers in the game. Um, and that's why I'm going to go with Trey Turner. I mean, he's played really good. Um... I mean, I mean, what else can you say about Trey Turner? He's playing really good right now. I mean, not a whole lot to say. Moving on to the AL catcher. Now, I mean, Jonah Heim has been has had a breakout season for the uh, Texas Rangers, and as much as I want to vote for them, I don't think I'm going to. I mean, I love my my guy Jose Trevino. Um, and he should definitely get some votes, you know, just with his elite defense behind the play, his framing ability. But it's the All-Star game. No one really cares about that. They just want to see hits. Um, Jose Trevino should definitely, I think, should definitely be in the finals for a catcher in the AL. It should between be Jose Trevino, the guy I'm going to vote for in Jonah Heim, and the guy I'm going to vote for is Alejandro Kirk from the Toronto Blue Jays. Alejandro Kirk has been just a hitting machine. Uh, this season, hitting 311, six home runs, 22 RBIs, and I mean, in a lineup where you have Vlad Jr. hitting like 260, Teoscar Hernandez hitting 250, Bo Bichette hitting 260, and then it's just a breath of fresh air when you see Alejandro Kirk in there. Uh, I know right now that the Yankees are playing the Blue Jays. I think he hit a home run yesterday, or maybe it was today. Yeah, it was yesterday. Um, but, I mean, Alejandro Kirk has just been really good for the Blue Jays this year. And in a weak position, uh, he's def definitely the standout guy. And now over in the NL side of things, this is one guy. I'm not even going to second-guess myself. It's Wilson Contreras. Like, this man has just been hitting and hitting and hitting and playing good defense, too. Um, but Wilson Contreras, I think this year, has solidified himself as the best catcher in baseball. Um... You know, maybe maybe people, oh, well, JT removes so, uh, not really this year. You know, he's kind of not playing as good. Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely going Wilson Contreras. Definitely going to be on the move at the deadline. Um, so, you know, watch out for that. Um, so, yeah, Wilson Contreras and Alejandro Cook are my two um, catchers. Now, in the outfield, I'm going to just go ahead and select Aaron Judge. Um, I mean, what else can you say about Aaron Judge? Uh, not only has he been playing right field, he's been playing center field for the Yankees. And when you're 6'7", 280, you're like, that's not a guy that should be playing center field. Well, he is, and he's doing it great. Um, you know, Aaron Hicks is just atrocious this year. Joey Gallo has not been normal Joey Gallo. And John Carlos Stan, while, yes, he's playing well, he was hurt for a little bit. And, but then he wants to play right field. I don't really get why he wants to play right field, whatever. Um, but yeah, Aaron Judge, I mean, leads the league in home runs. What else can you say about him? I mean, he's just one of the best players in all of baseball. Next up, th this is, this is, I mean, this is where we get tough. I mean, outside of Judge, I mean, maybe, I mean, like, there's Mike Trout. I mean, it's Mike Trout, like, come on now. Um, a guy I would really love to... See, he gets some votes as Julio Rodriguez from the Mariners. He has been really good um, as a rookie. Uh, my pick right now to win AL Rookie of the Year, yes, I know uh, Jeremy Payne exists, but it's still Julio Rodriguez in my opinion. But I don't think he's worthy of an all-star game starter. Um, when you, I mean, when you have Mike Trout, uh, not over Mike Trout. So Mike Trout's going to be my second <clears throat> my second um, outfielder in the AL. I mean, come on now. It's Mike Trout. He's the best player of our generation. And, I mean, I mean, there's nothing else you can say about that. Um, his Angels teammate, Taylor Wood, uh, has also been playing pretty well. But, you know, not been that great since um, 
since he's come back from injury. Kyle Tucker has been really good for the Astros as well. <coughs> I mean, Giancarlo Stanton, don't know why. I mean, I guess he's playing right field. You know, he he deserves to get some votes. Springer is another guy. Luis Obey has been really good. And I, I, this third spot is just really tough to decide. Because, I mean, you you have so many players right here, man. It, it's, really, it's really tough to decide. But uh, Byron Buxton, I mean... He's been killing it this year for the Twins. I would love for Andrew Benintendi to get some love. Future Yankee, by the way, at least I hope. Um, would just love to trade him, trade for him, trade, you know, like Aaron Hicks and like Miguel Andujar. That, that'd be that'd be great. Come on, Cashman, do it. Get, get Andrew Benintendi, please. Um, but I'm going to go with Byron Buxton. Yes, I know the 231 average is a little alarming, but come on. It's Byron Buxton. I mean, when healthy, he's a top 10 player in baseball, in my opinion, or at least he can be. Um, he got off to a freakishly hot start to this to this season, and then cooled down severely, and now he's coming back. He is, I mean, he. I think he's hit like... I saw a stat the other day about him in the month of June, but... Uh, he's been just so good. He's been, he's just been crushing the ball this year. So I'm gonna go with Buxton, Judge, and Trout as my three AL outfielders. Now in the NL, this, I mean, it could get a little tricky. Uh, I mean, they still have Lorenzo Cain. He got DFA today. Unfortunate endings for him in um, Milwaukee. But yeah, so. In the NL outfield, it would just be hilarious if we got Tommy Pham and Jock Peterson to start in the outfield for the NL. That would just be absolutely hilarious. Um, I would, I would just love it for that to happen. Um, but unironically, Jock Peterson definitely deserves some votes. He's been great for the Giants this year. And when you figure like Bryce Harper isn't here, Acuna's been hurt for a lot of the year. I mean, unironically. Jock Peterson and Tommy Pham could get a decent amount of votes. But I'm going to start this off with Ronald Acuna Jr. Like, come on out. It's Ronald Acuna Jr. I mean, we all know he's he's he missed a lot of the start of the season. You know, he missed the first, like, two months of the season. But still, come on now. It's Ronald Acuna Jr. How do you not have him in your All-Star Game ballot? Next up, Mookie Betts has been really good for the Dodgers this year. Um... I mean, and for a team that, you know, is arguably, you know, one of the best in the league, and you have a star like Mookie Betts, I mean, I mean, it, it's it's really simple. I mean, Mookie Betts is just, you know, he started to decline a little bit, you know, in 21 and 20. Uh, well, not so much in 20, but definitely in 2021 was kind of a down year for him. But he's rebounding very strong in 2022. And now this last spot, it could get a little tricky here. I'm really considering about voting for Jock Peterson because that's just, I mean, he's, he has been really good for the Giants. And, I mean, Jokes and Profile has been pretty good for the Padres. He started off super hot, kind of slowed down recently. Kyle Schwarber has been heating up in the month of June. I mean, Juan Soto is Juan Soto. I mean, come on now. Uh, but, yeah, very unironically, I'm going to go with Jock Peterson. Um, he's just been... Really good for just no reason for the Giants. They signed him after the lockout, and everyone was like, oh, I mean, whatever. He's probably not even going to start for them. And here he is on an all-star game ballot. Um, So, yeah, he's there. those are my picks from the outfield in the NL. Ronald Cunha Jr., Mookie Betts, and Jock Peterson. Moving on to designated hitter, I mean, I'm not even going to think twice. Jordan Alvarez and Bryce Harper. Um... Just very, very, I mean, obvious choices. Jordan Alvarez is one of the best hitters in the league, and that's all you need from the designated hitter. And so is Bryce Harper. You know, he's he dealt with that injury, and, you know, he's now he's being used as a DH, and he's just been one of the best players in the league. Trying to win back-to-back -back MVPs. Uh, do I think he's going to do it? Probably not. Um, as like I said, Paul Goldschmidt exists. Um... And then, like I said, Jordan is just one of the best hitters in the league. I mean, Shohei, whatever. I mean, he's not even. He's Shohei is still overrated in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's my also game ballot. I'll run it through one more time for you guys. In the AL, we got Ty France, Andres Jimenez, Jose Ramirez, 
Zandu Bogarts, Alejandro Cook, Byron Buxton, Aaron Judge, and Mike Trout. And then you would on Alvarez at DH. In the NL, we have Paul Goldschmidt, Jeff McNeil, Manny Machado, Trey Turner, Wilson Contreras, Ronald Cooney Jr., Mookie Betts, Jock Peterson, and Bryce Harper. So, uh, yeah, uh, no, what, what, what happened here? Uh, yeah, uh, let me know what you guys' um, picks are in the comments below. And, uh, you know, we'll have to wait until July 5th for when we can vote on the starters. And, uh, go vote, guys, as well. I mean, let, let me know in your, your ballot down in the comments below, like I said. And, uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.